always pray with the Ignatian examine and the conclusion of that form of prayer is to look to the day ahead and ask for God's you know, guidance, the Spirit's guidance. So I literally go to my calendar and I look at what's going to be happening and incorporate that into my prayer. And then I also pray for, actually it's grown to five pages worth of concerns, praying for our staff, praying for our parishioners, praying for people who have died, praying for difficult situations. My name is Elizabeth Simcoe. Um, my role in this parish, St. Vincent de Paul, is as parish life director, a lay leader according to Canon 517 in the Code of Canon Law, which allows for lay people or deacons to lead parishes under a canonical pastor when there aren't enough priests available to pastor parishes. I do believe that this was a response to a call from God it just felt like, well, this is, this is a story that needs to be told. Not so much about me, but the mission and the opportunity to minister. Being in the church when I'm the only one in there, it feels like being, well, this is a metaphor, feels like being in a womb. There's this place from which new life comes forth. And so I feel the quiet, I experience the beauty, and I'm also thinking about what do I need to do. First of all, there are many households that come from outside the neighborhood. The pastor of many years, Father O'Brien, was fond of saying that we come from 50 zip codes. I see myself as somewhat of an orchestra conductor. So there are all these people who play their instruments really well, and it's my role to help them play well together. What we were doing is, um, you introduce the Christ Have Mercy, and then the cantor is going to chant, or sing rather, the verse, the tropes. Okay. Okay, yeah, okay. and then, then you conclude it. So that's the only thing that's different. So essential things, first of all, absolutely welcoming and hospitality. When people walk in the door, someone should say, welcome to St. Vincent's. The high point always is when the community gathers on Saturday and Sunday for worship. That's when the life of the community is most evident. So when I move, I'll uh, oh, give, give you our ad. new address. Okay, yeah. all right, okay. very good. We had the blessing from the 1950s on to have large numbers of men going into the priesthood and Catholics were a burgeoning population and now we are a contracting population, we're aging out. I think that one of the assets of this model is that working collaboratively with priests who are with us both in the community and celebrating the sacraments is that some of the community generating activities or issues can be managed in a collaborative way. Liturgical ministers are needed and please sign up on the MSP uh, portal. If you're going to be involved in parish ministry, you have to be a really good listener. You have to be able to be attentive, not only to what the person is saying, but how they are saying it. Things are on the mend. Good. Uh, you know. I love your hat. There is no such thing as a typical day. Each day brings its, there's a, a plan, and then there's what really happens.
as you know, I wanted to help my mom plan her funeral. Um, you said she had given some thought to songs. Yes. Um, we were thinking about for the entrance song, uh, Be Not Afraid. Mm -hmm. It's a favorite. Each interaction allows me to see Christ in a different way and to help them to be Christ to each other. So that's the primary thing is, is the spiritual journey of the people and being part of that. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. From the rising of the late autumn sun to its setting, scatter the darkness with the light of your love, O shining one. Make us short on mean thoughts, long on offering words of comfort. So almost since the time that I was a child or a teen, I've been involved in ministry. I was involved in catechetical ministry when I was in high school as um, an assistant and then later in college as a catechist. So as I was involved as a volunteer, it became apparent that there were ways to be involved in the church actually as, as a vocation, as, as a profession. So from there I was in campus ministry and then um, invited by the Bishop of the Diocese to be the Director of Prayer and Worship and then uh, six years later to be Chancellor. When this parish opened up I was pondering, you know, continuing in the ministry I had at the time or was there something else? And through prayer, it became more and more clear to me that I was experiencing a call from God to participate in this ministry. We have a parish staff of 15 people, including myself, but that most of whom are part-time. There are four of us who are full-time. And the ministries include social outreach, administration, faith formation. We also have pastoral care of the sick. And then, of course, the bedrock of any parish, the custodial staff that keep us clean and tidy and safe. I'm on my way to the food pantry. It's probably the key or signature ministry of the parish. There are a lot of people this past month, 419 household visits that are served by our food pantry. One of the things about the food pantry, we serve many immigrant people, but more recently, the people coming to be served are people who never expected to be going to a food pantry. People who had full-time jobs, particularly in the service industry, restaurants and such, and they no longer have their jobs or they've been put on such reduced hours. They can't afford to pay their rent and buy food. I've lived here for 30, okay. almost 34 years. You're always conscious of, I am always conscious of what my interactions are like because you can walk into the grocery store and ask someone how they are and because of who you are, they're not gonna say fine, they're gonna tell you some deep story of some difficult thing that is happening. You say we practice courageous hospitality Courageous has the same root word in French as heart. I think what we do comes from the heart. I'm really grateful for all the volunteers and donors who help us be able to do what we do. Hi. Hello. Holy Spirit, we praise and thank you. At our last meeting, Griff had proposed that we install an electrical vehicle charging station. One as part of the process was, uh, from an insurance perspective, whether or not we could, if there, if there would be issues of calling this a public uh, station or keeping it private to, uh, to parishioners. When I think of a, a a good pastoral model it's someone who's attentive to the needs of the people. Think about the budget. The budget is it's a very black and white thing. You have money or you don't. And But how do you use your money? And what guides and, and directs your use of money? So you listen to the people to how they want to express the, their vocation as Christians. And you listen to God first and foremost as to, as to 
how God might be wanting to work in this time and in this space. Looking forward to seeing Sam. I haven't seen him in such a long time. It's been a really tough year. I'm wondering how things have gone for him. Hi, Sam. It's good to see you. How are you doing? Good. Good. Okay. I think everything is built on relationships, and professional or institutional relationships are built on respect. And so I feel very well respected by um, the priests in our diocese, and I'm grateful for the relationships I've had with them. Each time I went to anoint somebody with COVID-19, um, I would get to the door and be told by somebody on the staff that I couldn't go in. Oh. Um, which was uh, probably the most heart-wrenching thing I've yes. experienced yeah. as a priest. How hard for the families, too. Because there are so many crises in the church, people say, why do you stay? And it's really the people. They energize me. They're accompanying them on their spiritual journeys helps me deepen my own. God's creation didn't just stop with the seventh day. God is continually calling forth new experiences in which people can discover their gifts. We all contribute to the building up of the body of Christ. We all contribute to the presence of Christ in the world. I'm Colleen Dully, assistant producer at American Media and a host of Inside the Vatican. Thanks for watching that last video. If you like what you saw, please click that subscribe button on your screen. Your support helps us continue to lead the conversation at the intersection of the church and the world. Thanks.